early happy new year to you. Um, it is a couple days away from New Year's Day and we are actually leaving the house for the first time um, since Sunday and um, it has been such a wonderful time at home with the kids all being there as well. Um, Ethan has a few days off of work and so he is doing some fun things with the boys um, this morning and me and Roxanne and Axel are heading to do a grocery haul <laughs> today. So um, we need quite a few staples um, products and things like that. So um, we have a few errands to be running as well. Um, but it's going to be a fun day. It's going to be a good day. Um, so typically when I go grocery shopping, I always have the kiddos with me. Um, typically. Um, it's rare to not have them or to only have a couple. And so I usually embrace those moments. Um, I have a lot of tips and tricks for you guys whenever it comes to teaching your kids how to cooperate in a grocery store. <laughs> because we all know that that can present its challenges for sure. And you hear Axel. Axel's never been a fan of the car seat. Um, never. So, um, anyway, so we typically go to um, Aldi for our groceries. I love Aldi's. They actually deliver to our house still. Um, if you have it, if you have no idea what Instacart is, um, check that out because Instacart has saved me so many times. Um, love Aldi and Instacart. Um, but whenever I just need maybe a little more bulk items or just looking for something a little different to cook for dinner and that sort of thing, I always try to go to Sharp Shopper. Um, there's, it's just like, um, it's just a great option for a big family. Things are a little more affordable. Um, we always check dates and that sort of things, but we're going to be going to Sharp Shopper today. And so I'm excited, so stay tuned as we go on this little adventure um, this morning. We are just moments away from the store, and I wanted to know, I wanted to more so, I guess, share my, um, my insight on this week, like living this week out. I will probably, after thinking about it for a little bit, I will probably have to say that this is one of my favorite weeks of the year. Like, the time frame between Christmas and New Year's is like one of the best for me. Um, I just love it. I have the perspective of um, doing all the things, and most people will probably like try to rest and recoup and relax during that time, and I do as well. Like, I mentally check out um, and Part of the way I operate is I have to be productive. Um, I It's just wired in me. I have to be doing something pretty much all the time. I'm not saying that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, it has its pros and cons for sure. Um, but I am generally not really a lazy person. And so um, I take this week to do lots of things. <laughs> Um, I like to go into the new year with a fresh start, with a clean plate, and I organized and um, decluttered probably most of my house. <laughs> um, every closet gets touched and looked at and fixed. Um, every All the drawers get gone through, that sort of thing. And so I really just take this time and I just do all that. And I, we get rid of broken stuff, we get rid of old stuff, um, we donate things. Um, there's all kinds of things that we, I do in that week. And it's such a good week because um, it's one of my like ways to just kind of zone out, you know? Like I don't, I don't typically use social media to zone out. I don't like to. Um, and I don't watch really TV very much. Um, so just doing something is is like therapy for me. And so um, I have taken this time to really declutter and organize and clean through stuff this week. And I love to go into the new year um, with a clean slate.
And so I also use this week to just kind of reflect on all the great things that happened in the past year. There were definitely challenges. There's always challenges, right? And um, I went through and just kind of mentally checked all the blessings that we've had throughout the past year and just reflected on it. And the things that I kind of want to change or do better in the upcoming year. And so I like to goal set. I like to um, uh, make challenges kind of for myself. And I don't really like to say New Year's resolutions because I never stick to those. But just kind of mental notes of where I'm at and where I want to be and want to go. And this is in every aspect. And so um, I am going to be sharing with you in another video how I um, create my calendar and how I prioritize things and practical ways to put them into motion. And so stay tuned for that one as well. It will be coming hopefully next week. And then um, I am also going to be showing you later on all the, all the things. We're almost in store. So all the things that I get at the store, I will be going through and showing you all the things I did end up grabbing and um, why is on a couple things. And also we have a bulk food, food storage in our house. And so... Um, 2021 really made us take a look at really 2020 I guess really take a look at um well Ethan and I kind of have the perspective of it's not just him and I you know and so if there's ever a situation where you know we can't get to the store at any time we want you know or something like that again we need to be prepared for that and so we have started a bulk food food storage supply and so we've also um, done a few other little cool things that I want to share with you guys as far as that. And so food prepping for the family and whatnot. So um, I'm excited to share those with you guys as well. And we are here at the store at Sharp Shopper. It is a very dreary day. Excited to be out of the house and at the store today. Um, a few tips before we go in that I have found really helpful and really useful when you're grocery shopping with kids. Step one, always park beside a grocery cart thing, <laughs> return thing, like always, because whenever I come out of the store, um, I always put the kids in first and then unload the groceries, depending on who's with me, because Xander and Lenny will help me put the groceries in the car. Um, but the littles, I always, always put in the car and then I do the groceries. And so you don't wanna be walking the cart far away from your vehicle when your kids are in the car. And so um, always, I always park beside a thing. I will walk further from the store or to the store um, if that still means I'm parking beside a grocery cart thing. Um, tip number two, when you, ha when you go into the store, I feel like we always create expectations of how our kids should behave in the store. Um, and I sure do. And I have verbally communicated all of my expectations for how they should behave in the store. Um, so usually we get do a little pep talk in the vehicle before we go in. Um, we're standing beside mommy. We are having hands on the buggy when I ask you to. We don't touch anything off the shelf unless you're asked to. Um, and things like that. And, um, but all these expectations be okay if they don't happen. Be okay if, you know, your daughter or your son grabs a couple things off the shelf and they knock on the floor or we bump into someone going down the same aisle. It is okay because we can use those as learning experiences and just say, it's okay, just say you're sorry. Or, okay, let's put this back up on the shelf, but you know what? Let's make sure we're keeping our hands to ourselves. So there's ways to correct, um, correct your kids and do it in a polite way and learning way when you're in a public setting. Um, step number three, um, let them help. And I know that it can be, sometimes it's harder. <laughs> Actually, most things are more difficult with kids than not. Um, but let them help you say, Hey, I need that box or Hey, let's do this. Um, and so let them put stuff in the cart. Even if they smash the bread, it's okay. Just be okay if expectations aren't met and let them help. Um, my last tip, and this is kind of a little dependent on age, 
is to, um, actually I have two more tips. Um, depending on age is to let them walk because they burn energy. You're not fighting with them in a shopping cart. And if you're like me, I sometimes have two carts and it's hard to watch a kid in the cart, making sure they're sitting on their high knee and all kinds of things and keep track of the ones that are around you as well and focusing on your list. So always go to the store too with a list because it's just better too. Um, and so I always try to let them help. Um, it's more difficult. Sometimes they fight over who grabs which box or bag or whatever the case may be, but let them help because they're learning this is how this, this works. Um, they really pick up more whenever it's seen um, than told. Um, and then my last tip, um, my last tip is um, one that is also pretty challenging. So depending again on age, I currently have with me Roxanne, who's three, and Axel, who is going to be one next week. And um, they both, actually I shouldn't say they both, definitely Axel still naps. Roxanne is hit or miss. Um, but time your shopping trips when they are best rested. Um, or we have about a 25 minute drive to this store. So I timed it this morning that maybe they would take a little nap, um, prior to going into the store. So currently right now they're actually both sleeping in the car, which is amazing. So it's just going to take a minute for them to wake up and just get their bearings. Um, but time time that nap and that rest time like my kids are best in the mornings and so um they're best mentally they're best in every aspect they're not tired they're not grouchy they haven't had a long day and so i always shop in the mornings um so just time your trips around that nap time and when their best um attitudes and demeanors are because um it will save you in the hall whenever you have good positive attitudes from your kids in the store as well. So here we go. What you say, sis? Crackers. Should we get some crackers? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hi, buddy. Hi. Hello. We shop in. bulk items you can get flour it all depends on what they have different kinds of flour and they have a huge brown sugar bag and rolled oats all in big bulk options And we are all done making our way out back to the car to unload our cart. All right, so this is what um, we got that's extra um, food and things like that that's going to go downstairs. Um, we have a freezer and um, a fridge down here. And we have all of our backup food storage I this is also the area that I do a lot of my painting in so I have everything kind of tarped but and this is not like the most organized system um but we're working on that so we have actually we do extended shelf life items um that are back here um that we prepare in buckets we food save and put in buckets and that sort of thing and we have backups of a lot of things and then our canned goods as well we have a medicine bin all kinds of things so more in another time i did want to share with you a few um really great finds that i got at sharp shopper um one being um these applesauces these are ten dollars they are in date 
and there is 50 pouches of you guys if your kids eat a lot of applesauce pouches these are unsweetened white house brand um, we already did do one box the last time i went to sharp shopper and the kids love them no sugar added and there's again 50 pouches for 9.99 which is um at walmart i usually get walmart brand applesauce pouches and they are about five dollars for i think 20 pouches so great sale buy on those and then we got, of course i got a couple so and then the other thing that we like to do we get um box mac and cheese we got a bunch of like quick hamburger helper meals which we don't do too many of um but we do like them they had um this was a really cool where is it we had one really cool find. oh these are great a good buy um i don't know if you eat my kids love veggie straws and so they had the ve veggie wave strips for 99 cents and then we got some of the regular veggie straws as well we get a lot of their frozen potatoes um, because you know as a mama i need something quick sometimes <laughs> and so we did that and then this was another thing that i wanted to add to my um bulk food storage um this is cream of um, cream of mushroom soup in a bag, so it's a little bulk sized, um, and I am gonna measure this out and prepackage it for one ninety nine, um, and I'm gonna save it, food save it, and we'll walk you through. I'll walk you through how how I do that another in another video, um, and then we also do this. We also buy bulk of our cheese and our um, like our lunch meats. And because we go through a lot of that stuff too, um, this was $6.95 for this chunk of provolone and we'll slice that up and packages out and, um, do that. So I got a couple things of cheese and I got ham as well. So just kind of get whatever I can get. That's a good price. And I don't, I tend not to like the frozen ones cause they do have like frozen, um, lunch meat options that you can dethaw and slice. I don't prefer it because I don't think it's, I just, I don't think a slice is right and it's just messy. I just prefer the fresh before it's frozen. Of course, maybe it was frozen, I don't know about it, but that's just how I, um, that is just how I buy it. I buy it. I'll spend a couple extra dollars and buy the more fresh than I will the frozen, already frozen one. So, um, we're going to put, I already went, had put all the boys brought in the groceries for me and then, um, I already put away all the upstairs groceries and so, now I'm doing our kind of like backup or second hand, second round of stuff or extra stuff that I bought, um, doubles of and things like that down here. Um, and those things will just kind of keep us and last us throughout the month as well. So I usually do like two, two decent grocery runs in a month. And so, um, but today was really successful and so we'll see how long it gets and, um, but stay tuned because the next video is going to be about meal planning and have a big portion of meal planning and how to cook on a budget and more tips like that. So let's get this groceries unloaded. <laughs> deep freezers in here um more the mess because this is a, a big portion of my messy workspace so um a tip another tip for big families or really just really anybody if you have a deep freezer which i think is a staple in everybody's like living i think everybody should have a deep freezer um we get um half a beef or a full beef every well we're starting to every year and so we did that this past year. We did a beef and um, we've actually done pigs in the past as well. And it is a really great option to do if you have the space. And especially now, you if you have the space and um, the ability to do it and hold the 
hold the food. Um, it's really nice whenever you go through things like COVID to have meat on hand at all times. Typically do, um, this is our freezer that we typically, obviously those are going to be pitched. I need to go through these. Those are all going to be pitched, but these are actually from a few years ago and they're frozen peaches. What I was doing with them is just throwing them in tea and having peach tea with them. Um, and these are Christmas cookies and this is generally like our, um, vegetable and like freezing veggies and produce freezer. And then this one is our meat freezer that we generally have. So again, we try to stick by that, but sometimes we have too much meat and, or, you know, potatoes and it doesn't fit in each one. But for the most part, we like to try to keep it separated from a, like a produce and vegetable freezer and then a meat freezer as well. So, um, yeah. All right. And of course I want to show you guys a little glimpse at the business aspect that I do as well. So I have a couple tumblers that I'm going to work on painting and a pen that I need to work on glittering. So I'm just going to give you a glimpse as I get started with that. Um, I have all of my paint and stuff back here. And then this is my painting booth, which is why it looks so terrible. This is my exhaust thing that pushes the fumes out of the window. So, and I do also wear a protective mask as I, as I'm down here. So I don't inhale all those fumes that aren't captured by the vent and the fan. So here we go. <laughs> that has happened today and still a little bit going on it is it's in the evening I don't know the kids have been in bed for a little bit now and so Ethan and I are starting a little a little side projects as well um, space in our room 
in our house downstairs and it's a mess. I totally understand there's just random stuff everywhere, but we are working on converting this to a complete kids corner. And so we are going to be building a table here in the center. Um, and it's gonna have, um, in the center of the table, it's gonna have like a whole Lego box, um, but it's gonna be a work table and that sort of thing. Um, we are actually, Ethan and I are actually spending some time together tonight and um, working on cutting all those boards out. So let's go see what we're doing. So here are Ethan's plans, very rough plans for the table. Um, all of his things. So him and the boys went to the Lowe's earlier today and got all the lumber for it. And this is the tabletop. It's upside down, but this is the tabletop. And we went ahead and cut the corners off. I always joke with Ethan because I always tell him that why buy something when you can build it? So here we are. And we are going to just go ahead and cut the center out of this tabletop top because this is where we're going to have like a drop-in bin for the Legos. Yeah. 